evening voters. Tonight, as the country discusses the assembly elections that were just held in five states of our country, tonight, as we begin the countdown to the grand finale, the general elections of 2019, <coughs> the government is also preparing a roadmap, a plan to tap into the NRI community. That's right. The non-Indian residents, lakhs of Indians, those of Indian origin, who are currently living in various parts of the world, working there either temporarily or permanently, but still don't have the citizenship of that country, are still Indian citizens. What about their voting rights? As things stand tonight, NRIs are allowed to vote in Indian elections. But for that, they have to come down to the country, go to their constituency and cast their vote. Now, what the government is doing, and this bill, by the way, has been cleared by the Lok Sabha, will be tabled in the Rajya Sabha in the upcoming winter session. It proposes to allow NRIs to vote via a proxy, which means if for some reason you are unable to travel to India to vote, you can ask somebody who lives in the same constituency to go and vote on your behalf. Now, while the bill has cleared the Lok Sabha hurdle, the Rajya Sabha hurdle is still left. Several opposition parties are questioning this bill, are questioning this decision. There are two sides to the debate. One is to say, why shouldn't they be allowed to participate in the Indian electoral purpose if somebody for some work reason is stuck in some other part of the world, is unable to travel back? Why should we take away their right to vote for the general elections? The other aspect says, how are you going to ensure that this is going to be a safe way? If you do not allow Indians living within India to get a proxy voter for them, if you do not give this right to the migrant workers in India, those in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar who travel all the way to Gujarat, Maharashtra and other states to work, if you don't give them this proxy vote right, why should the non-resident Indians living in United Kingdom or United States have this special privilege? That's the other argument. So tonight, we are going to debate this. We are going to debate the pros and cons of this bill and what should be the way forward. And I want to hear from you, citizens of our country, citizens who have family abroad, what do you think? Here are my three basic questions. Is the proxy method for voting a safe and credible method? Question number two. If NRIs are given this right to vote via a proxy, then why not do this for Indians living in this country but not in the constituency from where they belong or where they are registered? For example, the migrant workers. Why shouldn't they be allowed? Question number three. Should there be a rule stating that you must spend a certain number of days in India prior to the elections to have any kind of right in those elections to cast a vote. Let's say good evening to our panelists, Bhaskar Ghosh, leader of the BJP, Vandana Singh, spokesperson for the Samajwadi Party, Professor Jagdeep Chokar, founder member of the ADR, Mohammad Khan, spokesperson for the Congress Party, and Mr. T.S. Krishnamurti, former CEC. We'll also have uh, Judajit, who's an IT entrepreneur in Silicon Valley, and he's the chief correspondent of Nababanga, in North America and we'll have an NRA view coming in very soon. But first I'm going to go across to Mr. Krishnamurthy, former CEC, and get his view on if he thinks voting for NRIs via proxy is the right way to go forward. Mr. Krishnamurthy? Well, as far as the proxy system is concerned, it exists in respect of armed forces. We have given the choice. At the request of the armed forces, proxy system is allowed because most of them, uh, they serve in the border areas. But as far as um, NRIs are concerned, I personally feel it's better to give them either postal ballot or internet voting than proxy system. The reason being that there is less secrecy as far as proxy system is concerned. And I don't think for operational reasons as the army have, they have any justification to request for proxy voting. So postal ballot or internet voting could be considered, which could probably be more effective. As far as the domestic 
migrant voters are concerned, there is a real operational problem. Because in India, the many people have their voter name in places other than the place they work. So we may have to insist that they have to register themselves in the place where they are posted, rather than asking for proxy voting or uh, internet voting or um, uh, uh, <coughs> what is a postal ballot. But though it is justifiable, if you give it to the NRA, certainly it is justifiable for the Indian, ma ma Indian migrant uh, voters also. But operationally, we'll have a lot of problems. Operationally, there will be a lot of problems, say, uh, says Mr. Krishnamurti. Uh, let me also get in a view from Professor Jagdeep Shokar on this before I go across to the political representatives. Uh, number one, you said, is proxy voting a, a reliable system? Proxy voting is very commonly used in the corporate world in uh, shareholders meetings and so on. And there's a report from the Security and Exchange Commission of the U.S., which says that the accuracy, reliability, transparency, accountability, and integrity of proxy voting is suspect. Now, proxy voting is not a reliable system by any means. So, therefore, proxy voting, I would say, either to NRIs or to migrants within the country, is, in my opinion, not justified at all. Uh, yes, the armed forces have that privilege because they deserve that privilege because of the kind of work they do. So, that is about how good proxy voting is. Now, the question is, should we give proxy voting or any kind of voting to NRIs and not to migrants in India? I like to refer to the migrants of Indi within India as MRIs, Migrant Resident Indians. Now, there are estimates that uh, NRIs are somewhere between 16 to 31 million, but there are 400 million migrants within the country. Uh, Mr. Krishnamurti, who is a very good and an old friend, is right. We may have to insist that they register their votes at their place of work. But one of the underlying definitions of a migrant worker is who is not stationary in one place. They go for a few months to one place. When the work finishes, they go to another place. Right. Now, for such people to expect them to register their vote at the place of their work, A, is not feasible even otherwise. But they are most of the time daily wagers. Yes. They cannot afford to take the time out to go and get their vote registered. And then after three months, they move somewhere else. This is completely not feasible. But yes, I agree there are operational problems. But if we are willing to solve operational problems mm. of some uh, 20, 30 million people who are living outside the country of their own volition, Mm. Nobody has asked them to do so. They may also have had an economic necessity because they make better money there. But there are 400 million odd people who are toiling in the country at the minimum wage. Do we not consider them to be worthwhile uh, decision makers in the country's affairs? This is grossly unfair. And uh, Mr. Krishnamurti also suggested the postal ballot or the internet voting. Yes. I am extremely skeptical of the internet voting. Yes. Internet voting is amenable to all kinds of problems. Uh, yes, postal ballot is possible. But I really don't understand what is the problem for NRIs to go to the nearest Indian mission or consulate and walk, cast their vote there, which is the system which already exists. Okay. Now, we have our good friends in the, in the, all over the world who want to vote from the comfort of their homes, whereas people living in India have to go and stand in lines. Yes. Uh, you know, this is this, to me, it smacks of privilege which arises out of money and influence. Okay. The migrants within the country have no money, they have no influence, they have no lobby. The NRIs have money, they have influence, they can get together in a Pravasi Bharti Divas. Yes. There is no MRI Divas, you know. That fact, is the, the fact of the matter also is, uh, um, the, uh, uh, Professor Choker, that the fact that they do have a lot of money and some of them are big donors to even our political parties and big supporters also makes a, vo a voice 
account. Uh, and which is probably why their voice is being heard right now. Well, they, but fair they, enough, if they you're are, an Indian, uh, you, sh you should have well, a right are, to vote in this country. Uh, uh, and so we, we have to see how we can make it possible for most number of people. So yes, I do agree with you. If it is being um, made uh, uh, possible for the NRIs, then make it possible for the Indians living in India as well. Uh, and give them this right via proxy vote, if that's the logic. But let me go across uh, to, uh, to Mr. Bhaskar Ghosh. Uh, and ask him, what, what is the reason that the government <coughs> is pushing ahead with this bill? There seems to be a lot of opposition by rival parties. What's the thought process, Mr. Ghosh? <clears throat> First of all, um, uh, the fundamental of the whole concept, which was initiated in UPA2 regime, was let us not deride the contribution of NRIs. And they have made a place in themselves by their hard work. And their commitment to India is truly remarkable. This was quote unquote our law minister, Mr. Ravi Shankar. Now, what was actually uh, according to uh, these uh, Representation of People Act 1950, which has been amended Representation of People Act 1951. So there was no provision for those 3.1 almost crores of the NRIs to cast their legitimate constitutional right and <clears throat> to in order to establish, in order to exercise their fundamental right as per the constitution, we have framed this particular subsection which seeks to enable the uh, election commission to frame rules to allow him to vote in person or by proxy and not in any other manner at any election in a constituency where a poll is taken. That means, my friends, my, my, my honorable panelists, they are asking for a misuse of the proxy vote. Yes. But you, if you go through the bill, you will find that if it is misuse that lead to the cancellation of the mandate. How will you So our that? minister once again reiterated, quote unquote, let us trust the NRI. Let us trust the NRI. See, the whole system, the democratic no, system, sir, here is, my question. is based on giving mm. respect and trust to... Yeah, exactly. You are saying this whole system is based on trust. Now, how, how do you trust that uh, somebody who's been given this right by an NRI who's sitting in the Silicon Valley uh, to go and vote on their behalf may just go and vote in a different manner? How are we going to have that trust? Is open uh, to, to, be, to, uh, to be influenced by anybody else around them? Is probably going to even take money and vote in another way because this is not his own vote. His own vote has already been cast in whichever way he wants to. So uh, how, do, how do you say that this is a foolproof method? That's the big question that I am asking. Uh, uh, Mr. Krishnamurti, yeah. Yeah. is that a First concern? Of all, yeah, yeah. First of all, I, I will, I, I will, I will, no, I will answer it. So I will answer it. Any Indian, Mr. Krishnamurti, please. Yes. Should I? Should I go ahead? Should I it go ahead? It is not. It is not so much the lack of trust of the NRI. Yeah. Hello. Yes, sir. Go ahead, please, Mr. Krishnamurti. It is not so much the lack of trust of the NRI. It is the lack of trust of the proxy. Yes. Proxy can give a wrong. This one. We, I mean, we trust the NRIs. Uh, we, we have no doubt about the patriotism and so on. But the question is, the proxy not only can vote uh, contradictly, he may also brag about it. There is no secrecy involved in it. Yes. So you have to be very careful. And that is the reason why I suggested postal ballot or internet voting. Jagdish, uh, Justice uh, Mr. Jagdish Chakar mentioned about limitations of internet voting. Internet voting has certain problems. But we can provide for some safeguards for limited sector of voter population and not for everybody. So I would suggest that at least some study can be made whether internet voting can be given yes. with suitable safeguards. Well, you know, failing in, in, which postal ballot is the ideal answer. Perhaps this, I, uh, one camp believes that in, 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 a, in a scenario where people are even alleging EVM hacking, what's to say there won't be any internet hacking when this voting takes place? Uh, in the same way, I am saying what's to say uh, literally the proxy will not be influenced uh, or bought over and the vote may go otherwise. But that's just one aspect. We have uh, the Judajit 
who's an IT entrepreneur uh, in the Silicon Valley who's joining us right now. And Judajit, what is your view? Should this right be given to NRIs? Would you want to ask somebody you know who lives in your uh, uh, hometown where you're registered uh, to go and cast uh, your vote on your behalf? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so there are three aspects to it. Okay, the first of all, right, you know, the finally a government has thought about NRIs and the, the kind of a connect the imbibical cord that NRIs had with the mother India. It has been recognized. We always feel being a you know stakeholder of the India's progress and uh, the how the you know India's image as a you know the global arena. We kind of play that ambassador. We that's how we see it. You know, whatever we are doing, we are actually you know ensuring India's image in the world. You know, platform, be it Silicon Valley or any part of the world. So, from that mm -hmm. aspect, given NRI a right to vote and kind of decide, or at least to play that role within who will be the, you know, who you will be ruled or who you will be, you know, you know, deciding on India's fate is a great, great decision. Now, coming back to the fact, the second point I want to mention that there is a difference between, let's say, a, in the people of Indian origin or a US citizen. I'm talking about, let's say, in US, right? There are apart from 25 million NRIs all over the world. There are a lot of Indian origin people who has now become, you know, U.S. citizen. Probably, we are not talking about them. We are ensuring the people who still keep the Indian citizenship. That's the NRI, non-resident Indian, on a definition. Yes. So this is this is a group of people that it is. There is a distinct difference between these two group of people, and government has rightly who has that connect, you know, legal connect, being a citizen of India still has should have a right. So absolutely, kudos to government on that. Now, on a third part, that like how that should be made out, right? My, you know, the, the, our friends are talking about should it be internet, should it be, you know, some other way, you know, the, the, the ballot voting or the postal voting or the proxy. I mean, see, there is, a, you know, you have to get going at one point, right? And you have, you have to trust the process to start with. I'm sure, you know, they would like to see how it goes, how it goes, um, you know, there might be some risk involved, but still it has to go, I guess, to start in some point, right? Okay. So maybe okay, this so is the point it starts, and I'm sure they, they, it might evolve, it might change, or it might carry on with this. But the very fact that this issue has been taken up and getting the impetus is... Um, okay, Salute so let me, uh, let me let uh, me take that point across to Mohammed Khan because uh, I understand that the Congress party is not really in favor of this. Mohammed Khan, can you, can you help us understand why uh, you're not yeah. backing this bill right now? Uh, Tanvi, in 2014, when the Election Commission set up that special committee, they invited six national parties to present their findings. Our essential argument was one with regard to the trust deficit of the process. As of now, of course, we believe that every single Indian, regardless of where they may be located, have a fundament, have a statutory right to cast their vote and are entitled to exercise the right of universal adult franchise. But again, our demand when the bill came to the Lok Sabha, as was the demand of every single party other than the BJP and their allies, was to send, send this to a standing committee. You need to come up with mechanisms that ensure the sanctity of the vote. Every single concern you flagged so far is absolutely legitimate and valid. How do you ensure that my proxy doesn't vote against my wishes? And as you very rightly pointed out, we have the single largest diaspora overseas as per a UN report in 2015. The, as you po again pointed out, that equals about what? Three crore voters, possibly three crore voters. Now these three crore voters on a large scale exercising their franchise through a proxy mechanism would be very hard to monitor, right? And we, there is no, I mean, there is this saying while you're making a law, do not command what you cannot enforce unless you're able to build in enough safeguards into the law to prevent abuse. Until that point of time, do not rush to legislate like you've done in the case of several other bills which are now pending clarity through rules. And finally, I would say this, it's not as simple a matter of amending the Representations of People's Act 1951 or 50. You have to amend the conduct of election rules 1961. You have to uh, amend the uh, registration of elector uh, or the registration of electors rules 1960. So there's a large amount of legislative thinking that needs to go into this. The BJP has announced it well and good, and it might be a measure that you and I can look forward to in some time. But it needs greater study and scrutiny, and that is our position. Okay, um, and that's why we feel it should go to a standing committee. Okay, Shrikant uh, uh, is also joining us. Um, he he works for an artificial intelligence company in California. Uh, Shrikant, where, where, where do you stand on the on this debate? And also, do you want to respond to what one of our other panelists raised uh, the issue that why don't you go and uh, perhaps uh, uh, either vote via the 
uh, embassy or travel back home and cast your vote if you are really committed yes so tanvi here is the deal right? that, no? one, one important thing is that i in an ri is always an indian right so while the other panelists has clearly mentioned that there are two streams one is nris who have a valid passport i have an indian passport and i would love to vote for my uh, for my constituent right and the second thing is people who are citizens and sitting here uh, uh, you know who are citizens of other countries right that's that's a conversation that we need to do separately so nris need to have a vote the second thing is that we that, that we need to understand uh, uh the the fundamental philosophy behind how do we vote right in 2009 uh, we have uh, formed a panel here of nris and we advocated absentee voting rights we need to clearly understand the difference fundamental difference between proxy voting and absentee voting right absentee voting is there will be ballots uh, uh, you know you can download the form from the internet and mm. then you can physically sign that form and send it to the embassy and embassy is going to ship it we yes. don't have to reinvent anything there are countries already doing this all it takes is to emulate the right thing for me proxy voting is a risk because at this point in time i'm i'm myself seeing all these isha foundations uh, jaggi vasudev all these different babas and all of them having a huge network here yes. and it is an advantage for bjp to to make inroads mm -hmm. into this nri voting rights in 2009 when we when we requested i i am the one who called all 543 mps including rahul gandhi and all the likes of bjp big wigs i i i have those phone conversations we have documented it on the internet i've called everyone appealing for an absentee voting right in whatever format we can sit and figure it out so that that can that can ensure only 27 mps were sitting in that parliament mm. to amend the 1950 uh, people's representations act so the commitment of the congress was really bad at that time and all the political parties now bjp sees that there is a lot of image for modi and others and right. all these different babas and gurus having a huge penetration here okay. that to the CC foundation they feel that this is the moment to put in some sort of a junk proxy voting and then manipulate these elections okay the so shrikant is of the view that uh, you know this should be absentee voting absentee. which is uh, which is where you uh, download the form fill it up and go and submit it uh, in in the embassy uh, and not really so much as proxy voting the two nris on our panel on the other side of this debate and that's very interesting now i'm going to go across to vanna singh patiently waiting by and listening to everybody uh, what is your view vanna and and Also, I want to ask you specifically: Do you think if proxy voting is being allowed to the NRIs, we should at the same time also allow it for Indians in this country itself, the migrants who are living in different parts of, of the country, away from their uh, uh, constituencies where they are registered? In my view, proxy should never be allowed. Proxy vote can be vitiated. Ballot in our system is secret. and proxy vote will break that code so where is the need for this proxy if nris really want to vote directly they can go and vote at the indian missions abroad instead of using proxies who can be bought or ideologically biased so i don't understand the need for it i'm i mean there are approximately 1.6 crores uh, nris and a lot of them are Guj uh, gujaratis out there so this is a grand plan of uh, modi ji <laughs> to have this uh, one nation one election <laughs> so that they can add on 1 crore plus uh, uh, you know these uh, nri voters otherwise i don't see any reasons why they should be allowed if they are living in uh, countries where they are so happy so i don't understand they have chosen to live there it's not that they were asked to live there so if they are happy but what about what about, about people who have to go and work their system here there are other ways they can what about people who have to go and work there temporarily politically what about people who are employed by indian firms who have to go there and work temporarily and cannot make it back for the elections um, yes, why should the they miss the opportunity who are living there they yes. can go and exercise they can go and exercise their right in the indian embassies uh, wherever they are living okay they don't need yes. to use proxies 
Uh, Jadaji, do you want to respond to that, to uh, what is being raised here? Why don't you just go and vote in the embassy? Uh, why, why else do you need a special right? And I'm actually raising this question uh, also because one of our viewers has just uh, uh, tweeted in and he's asking how do NRIs even know what are the real issues on ground? So just respond so to what two, two, Absolutely. So two points here. Okay. So I'm hearing a little bit of sarcasm somehow on NRIs, how does it matter? They are anyway going for a greener pasture. How does it matter? Why they are a privileged citizen? Another way, you know, a little bit of scary, you know, scarcity about, you know, a little bit scared that, you know, NRIs, BJP has a huge cloud, bringing them, BJP has it. So that makes no sense, you know, because, you know, I just want to make it very clear, you know, it's even if it's not a BJP's fault if NRIs like them, you know, end of the day, it's, it's, it's a constituent, the 25 million people, you have to respect their feelings. Mm -hmm. and, and also, it's, it's, you cannot castigate saying that they have gone, they have taken their own. Being NRI is not a crime. So the two point I want to absolutely ensure. Third thing, you know, as you mentioned, yes, there can be a better can way, can be a, you know, Indian embassy. But at the same time, you have to understand. But it if they really care about somewhere. the country, you then know, they should make that effort to go and cast their votes in the embassies. If, if that is the rule, they will do that also. If it is coming as a proxy, they are just following it. We are just following what government is coming up with. But the very fact of the matter is finally a government has thought through that this big, huge population, we are more of an ambassador of Mother India. They should be given this right. So we should also give a lot of credit to that fact rather than keep criticizing and bringing some why the satires and why you know, the BJP will benefit. No. We should not care about it, you know. Whoever okay. is the party doing good, you know, right. for them. So, Mohammed Khan wanted to come in. the very fact that it's starting, it to be get ready. Yes. Mohammed Khan, go ahead, please. Yeah, I want to make uh, two points. I want... I want to make uh, three points actually very, very quickly. The first point relates to the fact that actually the amendment which allows NRIs to vote came in under the UPA2 government in 2010. I have the amendment in front of me and it said that notwithstanding anything contained in this act, every citizen of India who's not, whose name is not in the role, who has not acquired the citizenship of any other country or who is absent, even if he is outside India, shall have his name registered in the electoral role in the constituency. So I may point out that the foundation for this was laid out during the UP years to the gentleman who made the calls to the various MPs. This was a bill passed and promulgated in Parliament by the Congress government. The second thing I want to point out is, it is frankly immaterial who you choose to vote for. It is frankly immaterial. If you have every right as a citizen of this country, whether you want to vote for the BJP or the Congress, that is your fundament, that is your right to choose. And therefore, I believe you should have a, and we should facilitate it somehow. But what we are on is the schematics of it and the mechanisms of it. Finally, Vandana ji said something very important. You know, the secrecy of the ballot is something that we've debated for almost 70 years. Yes. It is a right that inheres in every person. I have no obligation to tell you or anyone else who I voted for. And it is also a vital safeguard in a country like us with proxy voting Absolutely. you are abdicating that right of secrecy so that is something that needs to be debated as well so but these is, are the three points is, but is that is that a problem if if the <coughs> voter uh, a voter himself or herself doesn't have a problem sharing that with somebody that they trust who can go, then go and cast a vote for them does the secret ballot argument then work uh, uh, professor then the Choker? potential for abuse argument comes in now Professor Choker, uh, do you believe that the argument about uh, secrecy uh, yes. about the ballot uh, uh, stands uh, or holds merit here? I believe it holds very much merit. Uh, there are so many issues that are being mixed up here. Hmm. Number one, somebody says that the trust in the NRI is not under doubt. The trust of the Indian who is living here who will cast the proxy vote is in doubt. That I find very interesting. <clears throat> Secondly, we have 32 million ambassadors of Mother India all over the world spreading the good name of Mother India. But there are 400 sons, toiling sons of Mother India who are doing their sweat and tears and building uh, skyscrapers in India, moving from city to city. Nobody is worried about them at all. This is actually very, very disturbing and appalling to me. 32 million people are more important than 400 million people who are in India, who are working their uh, heart and soul here and living from day to day. Nobody is talking about that at all. This is just absolutely point. amazing.
very valid point. Yes, Vanna. Uh, go ahead, please, Vanna. It's a very valid point, what he's saying. Mm. I mean, if you look at the pattern, there are 25 percent of uh, uh, people in a district or in a town, they are feeding 100 percent of people because 25 uh, percent is what they go and pay the taxes. So we're not worried about what is happening in India. We're worried about what is going on with the NRIs. They're very happy, very comfortable in whichever country they're living in, USA or Canada, they're holding high positions. So we're worried about That's them. Right. We're not worried about the people who are living in this country. Ma'am, NRS, NRS push in $72 billion in remittances. Please, let's not discredit the effort of NRIs. You know, that's that's a very bad idea. No, uh, it is not it, a question of money. It is not a question I mean, of uh, money. There are, great, more there, there, there are many ways you can help working. this country. Yeah. You can help your mother India. There are many ways. It adds to the GDP. I'm, I'm just saying that it adds to the GDP. You know, we, we are not talking about whether so, someone is just talking about to a debate or about money. Want, want, moving want, abroad being a good choice or not. But then, if you really power, care uh, so much, why would you right. use proxy? Right. So, so no, no, no. Okay. So yes, yes. 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 Shrikanth right. can respond so, to that, and then I okay. want us to come back to the original debate, which is about allowing yeah. NRIs to vote via right. proxy. I I don't believe that we should take away their right to vote, even if they are in some other country. If they choose to continue to be an Indian citizen, if they're still rooted, if they still travel back home now and then, then why should they not have the right? If they're contributing to nation building, if they're sending back money, then why shouldn't they have a right? Uh, that's not we the point of the debate. We are only opposing yeah? proxy voting. Yes, only the point of the, proxy yes that's the point of the debate. Their right proxy to vote. voting. Ma'am, I have one very good point. Shrikant first, please. Shrikant first, and then I'll come to you, Judajit. Uh, because I interrupted him. Shrikant, go ahead and finish your point. I'm, uh, I'm not trying to oversimplify Tanvi. I'm just saying that NRIs need the right to vote. That is as simple as it could be. And the the matter in which uh, the 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 voting will be given, whether it is pro, I'm just saying that if absentee voting is given, we can make it very simple. Where someone will download a ballot paper, the the system of of postal uh, procedures, policies, and practices is very intense. You can just send that, download it, sign it, send it to the embassy. And it should be good. In 2009, when the pepper spray MP, Lagarpat Rajgopal, came, and then I asked him clearly about this, he tells me that I can take a cash box, go to all these apartments here, and then make all of these NRIs sign, and then send it to uh, the embassy. So I'm just saying, we're going to hack things around. We're not going to start anywhere. Like the oh. other NRI, me, my comrade has been saying, we should start somewhere. But we shouldn't be over debating on why not migrants. It's not that case. If you are if you are an Indian citizen having a valid passport, or if you are still an Indian citizen, I in an NRI is still an Indian. You need to have a right to vote. But the procedures, policies, and practices needs to be tightened up. Nothing more than that needs to be debated, uh, uh, as I feel it. We shouldn't be start talking about Another, why not. You know, and then please you know, make what an effort and take that party. extra step to go and cast your vote. At the nearest embassy or wherever, whichever city you are living in, or whichever is, country you are living in, nobody is stopping that. Nobody is questioning that. Okay. So, yeah, Tanvi, just... one thing, you know, um, just wanted to add, like, yes. you know, very good point about how about the Indian migrant, but it is not mutually exclusive with NRIs, right? Absolutely, go for it, but that should not stop or delay the process that the voting right for Indians. That point number one. Point number two. We are talking about why it is proxy, why not embassy. I mean, do we know that 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 uh, you know that analysis must have been happened? I mean, considering the fact we are probably six months or four months away from the election, it might have come up that this is the ideal situation for now, and I'm sure it might evolve. So that's how I'm seeing it. You know, we should not you know shut it down saying no, you know, I should not vote just because you are not happy with the mode of voting. Okay, let's okay. go go for it. Let's see how it goes. And I'm sure it no. Well, I, in fact, I was going through the, this uh, uh, report that was put forward by a committee by the Election Commission also that explored various options. Uh, that can, they I could bring in can I come? Can I can I answer a couple of questions? Yes, Mr. Ghosh, coming to you right after this, uh, where the committee uh, evaluated various options, about three to four options, and they were of the view uh, that proxy voting facility would be a convenient. 
and a doable method of providing voting facility to overseas electors. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, this this is what the election commission one committee found. But of course, we've had uh, uh, we, and I have spoken to now two chief uh, former chief election commissioners who say that it's not uh, doable logistically. It, it, it is a very difficult challenge uh, uh, to carry it out. So Bhaskar Ghosh wanted to come in, and then Professor Choker, go ahead, please, Mr. Ghosh. Yeah, then we. I just, I just want to highlight one point that why fund, hello? Yes, go ahead please, we can hear you. Hello? Hello? Yeah, no, it's okay. Why fundamentally by default we are anticipating that proxy vote will be a false vote? In India, you have seen during the elections, assembly and, and the parliamentary election, lot of a uh, lot of cross voting, a lot of false voting, a mm. lot of chappa vote, everything happens. Mm. Okay, that doesn't mean that we will stop the entire process uh, of the voting here. Yes. Now, we are talking about whether proxy vote is allowed or not. Okay, I agree that in terms of the uh, secrecy of the uh, of individual is concerned as far as the constitution, fine. It may be, it may be, it may be. Uh, we can say compromised at certain point of time. But why we are talking that proxy vote means somebody is misusing the power? Because there is a specific provision in the bill, if you go through the bill, that the owner, the, 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 uh, the owner of the vote and the person who is giving the vote, he is responsible to select the person in his constituency. Hmm. If the person is not is not obeying the instruction of that person, then the vote will be cancelled. Number one. Number How do two, you know? Okay. Uh, some, so this some is what you said earlier I also, Mr. Ghosh. I'm not, I'm not able what to understand that. What is the contribution? That? What is the contribution? I can't understand that. Mr. Ghosh, can second, you explain you. to me how do you, how do you cancel, uh, how do you come to know that somebody has gone against what they were instructed by the uh, NRI and has uh, cast the uh, uh, vote the other way? How, how will you find out? And how do you... How do you prevent large-scale voter fraud? It's as See, simple as that. Suppose I say the, that 30,000 voters from Tampa, of Florida the are voting in a particular election for appo- this person, then who will go and verify with each one of those voters? You can't allow you me can't, to speak. Allow yes. me to speak. Go ahead. The, Please explain. This is the responsibility of the of the citizen to to select a person who should not disobey his instructions. Yeah, but then you are telling us that if because he does disobey vote, the, the vote of NRI. No, but you are telling us that if he does disobey instructions and goes and votes the other and way, and that and vote will point. be cancelled. I am questioning you on that aspect. How how will you ever find out? That doesn't make any sense. Professor Choker wanted to come in. Go ahead, sir. And then uh, one of our viewers is exactly. on the phone. We will go across how to will you verify? our viewers. Yes. How do you know your proxy didn't vote for the person you asked him? And what was my second point? Tell me just a moment. Mr. Ghosh, I'll come back to you. Point? Professor Choker wanted to come in on that point. I'll come back to you, Vaskar. Mentioned. Yes. Uh, uh, Professor Choker first, please. Go ahead. You see, first of all, I want to reassure the NRI friend who said NRIs need the right to vote. They don't need it, they have it. So long as one is an Indian citizen anywhere in the world, one does have a right to vote. The only thing we are debating and which he says should not be debated is how to operationalize that right to vote. The simple point is that the operationalization of the right to vote of 400 million people who are physically in India is also not being sorted out properly. Now, my contention is, if we can find a way for people to vote who are not in their constituency, it should be uniformly applicable to all Indian citizens, whether they are in India or outside. Absolutely. We are doing a grave injustice when we say people outside India will have a privilege and people within India will be denied that privilege. I do not accept that at all. I completely agree with you on yeah. that. And I, I, and so, like, I know that Shrikan said it's not an either That's or thing. That's actually a violation together, of Article 14. But if the government wants to bring in such a change, then bring in this change for everybody, for all Indians, because these laws should be same for all Indians, whether you're living here or not. Lancelot is on the phone line from Mumbai. He's been patiently waiting for a while. So we'll go across to him first. Uh, go ahead, Lancelot. What do you have to say? Lancelot, hi. Can you hear me? 
Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead, please. What did you want to say? I want to say is, when we were abroad, we never had the opportunity of voting, and we would love to vote. But the problem is, how do we know that the votes are going to the right people and the right person, whoever is standing for elections? It's such a heartbreaking thing to see all this debate going on, every party blaming one another for something which is to be done for the people of India, for the poor people of India. Whether it's the BJP, the Congress, the Samajwadi Party, it's heartbreaking. That's all I want to say. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for calling us. Um, there was a third uh, aspect. Uh, yes, go ahead, Shrikant. So when we make it a debate between there are people left out and there, there are other side of the people who are, who are gaining, this debate will never win because in, in, in Britain, they give voting right for people who are sitting in the jails also. So we cannot stop the debate when we say this versus that, right? The point is that government is thinking about NRA voting rights. What is the right way to do? As Jagdeep Saab had clearly mentioned, I, I, I respect ADR and the work with them. I have personally interviewed Jagdeep Saab on NRA my radio uh, sitting in Los Angeles uh, multiple times. And I can say that uh, credible people are, 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 are putting in the right uh, notions on how this should be. The procedures, policies, and practices needs to be tightened up. Rest of it, NRI, I in NRI is an Indian, they need to be given their voting right. That's it. Here is a question that I wanted to I, I, ask I, I, and I, I, an I, I, idea I, I, uh, that I, I want everybody to think I, about. I, I, uh, one minute, Jodhajit. Can, can I just ask this question because we, uh, uh, we needed to cover the third aspect of this debate. For somebody to have the right to vote here, should there be a rule to say you must Anji, have spent I was, I, I a certain amount of point, period allowed, in the country to. living in that constituency so that you know and you also understand what the existing issues are? So if you're going to be spending 330 days abroad, should you then be allowed to vote? Should there be a stipulated time that you spend in what India? Is, That's the uh, question that I'm asking. You know, as an NRI, yes, Yudhaji. I, I have a point on that, right? Yeah. Even if you are right, you know, how you, you know, that, 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 that kind of a little bit of a legitimate aspect that you are bringing. But if you see the huge amount of NRI is their next relative, you know, the direct relative, maybe the parents, brothers, sisters, all are there. It's they probably just only he or his, you know, this particular nucleus family might be there. And India, you know, the world being a global village, I can tell you. I'm here for the last almost 15 years. The way Indians are connected with their homeland, with their locality, with their city, with their para, you go to any micro level. So even if they're not physically present or maybe coming there in every year once or whatever, they know exactly and they are very, very concerned about their parents' well-being, their immediate family's well-being. So even if they're not exactly present there, but you can be rest assured they know who is doing what, who is doing good, who is doing that, not, not that good. So that one aspect. Another aspect here, as we keep talking about that proxy voting side, let's talk about power of attorney. Okay, power of attorney is there for ages. For NRIs to do any kind of property transaction, anything, we still have to, you know, trust someone out there. And it happens probably we get that, you know, notarized and all through embassy. But eventually, you have to trust someone. So that aspect being a geographical difference, you know, the the distance we are, that aspect, the trust aspect is there, and there are some process which is depending upon that. So I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to... What so I'm trying to say is I wanted to respond to the Jeet to, to an issue point that was raised also earlier on this debate, which is to say, uh, why are we giving you the easy way out? Uh, mm -hmm. Why don't you go and vote at the embassy or travel to India if you can and cast your vote? Why do you want an easier option, which is to just make a phone call to somebody back in India and ask them to go and stand in line for you and cast the vote? What would you say to that argument? Mm -hmm. Two, two points. First, it is not about easy, but it Precisely. is to optimize and maximize the number of participants. If you make the process... That by that logic, that everybody living in India should be given that option to remotely go just, online just and a, vote. 30 seconds to complete, uh, close my thought, Tanvi. Yeah. What I'm trying to say, that if you have to make it too tough, that someone has to travel to India to vote, the number of participants might drastically reduce. So it is more of to see what is the most optimized way. And I can tell you, I'm sure it is not about you just call someone and say, he's my proxy. There must be some legitimate process, either through embassy or through vote election commission, that it says that this person has been nominated as a proxy voter. So I'm sure that aspect will be there. Okay. So that is the yes. thing. It's not about making our All life right. I, ha I have another Indian who is currently not residing in India. Uh, and let's understand what Suresh's viewpoint is. Suresh, uh, hi. Thanks for speaking to us. 
Uh, do you think this is a good idea for proxy voting for NRIs? Well, I think NRI voting uh, definitely is a good idea, but I'm not entirely confident about the whole proxy voting thing uh, because it can be subjected to a lot of uh, malpractices. Mm -hmm. uh, I would much rather have another alternative, uh, just like the uh, ballot, uh, postal ballots. Uh, but for me, the larger issue is, you know, forget about NRI voting rights for now because just for the ordinary voters, we have so many issues. As we just saw today in Telangana, where voter IDs uh, registrations were deleted because of the yeah. RR seeding yeah. and all those issues. So I don't think we should even broach NRI voting rights right now, given the mess that we already have. All right, uh, Suresh, thanks so much uh, for calling and uh, sharing your view as well. Uh, on this, Vanda Singh wanted to come in. Go Tanvi. ahead, Tanvi, can I say something? Yes, coming to you, uh, Mohammed. next. Yeah, Vanda I just first. want to say something, a brief remark on that power of attorney. What is a duty, not a property, you can ask another guy to dispose of? So that answers your power of attorney. I don't know which panelist was saying. Uh, yes. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, yeah, look at yeah. the facts no, in the no, ground. No, the reason I Minus the rhetoric. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Okay, okay, so not let us. Uh, that, that is a point that. Uh, a fair vote from the EC to an individual. That, that well, that was, a, that was a point that Judaji that made. Judaji, go ahead. Now we can hear you. Go ahead and. Start your point again. Can I say something? That can we trust the person? He will, you say him to vote for party A and he goes and vote for party B. From that aspect, I brought it. Nothing else. <laughs> all right, all right. Point taken, point taken. Uh, Mohammed Khan, go ahead, okay, please. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, actually, I wanted to point out something. Do you know, interestingly, in 2010, in 2010, a, a number of NRIs approached the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court declined to intervene. Then another group of NRIs in 2014 approached the Supreme Court and asked them to again look into this issue. Both the times this exact same issue was in contention. How do you make it easier for NRIs to vote? I'm not at all on the point that they should be given any comforts or conveniences. I think it is our job for those who are in government when in parliament to try and make it easier for NRIs to vote. I don't think we should get into the argument of elitism and giving them comforts. If they want to vote, it is our job to figure out a way to make it easy and to make the process foolproof. It, to that end, I would say this to the two NRIs on the panel. You must press for a standing committee. And in that standing committee, they invite stakeholders like yourself. You must submit representations to the standing committee with suggestions as to how it can be uh, made secure. Yes, so, so when the actually standing committee is there forever. The standing committee is there forever. So let me forever. ask you this question, uh, uh, Mohammed. What is a better way? No, What's, what no. is a better no, here way is, to go here about is my it? Point. How do you make everything, this better? Everything cannot be referred to standing committee everything cannot be referred to so, jpc well choker sahab with respect choker sahab with due respect this i, is I JPC. just this i is just a want to standing ask committee we are talking about friend. it is an important safeguard in legislative scrutiny and choker sahab let me finish we have standing committees for every law of significance from the companies act to the land acquisition bill every every bill of merit passes through a standing committee and if a bill is of vital importance then it was must pass constitutional so, so Mahat Khan, Khan, here is my That's question to saying. you what Go is a better way? Why what? it was not done by the Congress? Why it was not done by the Congress? Mr. Ghosh, please, uh, let, let's, let's not get into a BJP versus Congress, Congress fight here. Bill. That is the the not the argument Congress we are making right, right now. Can I? Can we please have a constructive conversation? Can I please Ghosh try and understand from Congress question. what is a better alternative? Yeah. Some countries have already figured it out. I'll tell you honestly, at this point, Ghoshab, Ghoshab, I'll tell you. We are not against this move per se. We have given our objections in writing and it is only with regard to the mechanism. You can't say Congress didn't do it, so we'll do it just to spite them. No, by all means do it. But do it in a manner that A, respects the sanctity of the vote. Do it in a manner so that prevents potential for abuse. Again, Tanvi pointed, as you pointed out, that is the biggest vulnerability. I am given the right to vote for someone by proxy. I tell him I voted for X, but in reality I voted for Y. There is no way of verifying. Number two, it, there's a potential for voter fraud. What if tomorrow I recover 30,000 postal ballots from say New York voters who are all Indian NRIs which vote for a particular party. Let's say it's any party. I'm not saying uh, there's any predilection for any party or the other. If it's for any party, how will you verify? What is the mechanism for verification and redress? There okay. is none. We don't have none. that better system yet. So perhaps That's there needs need to, to be more conversation on this and more deliberation on this. I'm completely out of time. I'm yeah. apologies to Professor Choker. I couldn't go back to him for the last word. But thank you so much to all of our panelists for joining us. The fact of the matter is
this bill will come up for discussion in the Rajya Sabha. Now, usually we know how the uh, how our parliament sessions function and uh, the amount of or the lack of discussion that happens, but one hopes that when this bill is stable, there is a constructive conversation that takes place. I'm of the view that if you are an Indian citizen who's held on to that Indian citizenship, uh, but for some or the other reason, have to work overseas temporarily then your right to vote shouldn't be taken away that we should make or uh, help you vote cast your vote whichever way it is possible but it should be a foolproof method it should be a well thought out method which is not open to misuse abuse and fraud thank you so much to all of you for joining us on this debate